Farah Kimji, the founder of Future of Funds and your 2020 Toronto Crew President. We are so happy to have all of you join us online for today's professional development webinar. And before we jump into today's content, I wanted to share that tomorrow we will be hosting our signature event with, uh, presented by our signature sponsor, Oxford Properties. And it will be an economic outlook with Dr. Avery Schenfeld, the economist from CIBC. So please um, be sure to tune in. You can register from the Toronto Crew website as well as the newsletter um, that's been coming out in your inbox on a weekly basis. Um, as well, over the summer months, we will be continuing to offer um, some uh, programs for everyone to stay engaged, but we will be slowing down on some of our, our content uh, to regroup over the summer and sharing some of the content that we've already um, provided with our members. So stay tuned um, for um, what we'll be sharing in the months to come. Um, I'd also like to take this time and take a moment to thank our 2020 sponsors. Uh, we'll just scroll, scroll through uh, the, the presentation here um, and showcase the sponsors that have really been there to support Toronto Crew. Your sponsorship allows us to continue to deliver relevant and important programming to our members, even through these challenging times, and we are so appreciative uh, for your support for Toronto Crew. So thank you. Uh, I'd now like to just address a few housekeeping items for everyone. This session is being recorded and everyone is on mute and without camera. There is a chat function to the right that you can kind of jump in and chat individually and say hi to the others that are joining us live today and also chat with our presenters and, and panelists. And then uh, throughout the presentation, be sure to also submit um, your uh, questions for James and Nicola today. They'll be sure to answer throughout the presentation as, as well as at the end will be a formal Q&A session. Um, now, I'd like to just share uh, with everyone for our members and, and any non-members joining us today that the mission, mission of Toronto Crew is that we are dedicated to helping women excel influence and lead throughout their real estate careers. During this time, the board has thought of what that means given the current landscape, and we feel that offering programs that support the professional development of our members, even as many of us work from home, is very important. And so today I'm very excited to introduce today's webinar focused on elevating your career brand. Uh, we are joined by two of our uh, silver sponsors, Nicola Denning Miller and James Ashley, the co founders of High View Partners, a talent search firm focused exclusively on Canadian real estate. Nicola and James have over 20 collective years of recruiting for the Canadian real estate industry and have helped thousands of job seekers make their best next move, and hundreds of real estate firms make their next best next hire. They offer a high quality and low volume approach to recruitment and have carved a stellar reputation in our industry, not just for the work they do, but by being a force for good when it comes to giving back to our community. They are involved in a number of speaking engagements with companies, associations, and industry events, tackling matters that relate to the hiring process to help employers and candidates and are also involved in a number of charitable, charitable events to raise money for worthy causes. Highview is a proud sponsor of Toronto Crew and their support and advocacy for Crew and its members has been amazing to witness and share in. And I personally admire and appreciate the work that James and Nicola do to support our industry and the advancement of its people. Um, if you were here for part one, you guys are in for a real treat today. I'm so excited to, to learn what uh, James and Nicola have to share for part two of today's webinar. And without any further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Nicola to introduce today's webinar topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Farah. That was a, a lovely warm welcome. So hello, everybody, and welcome to Elevate Your Career part two. Um, building and leveraging your career brand. 
So just for those who don't know who James and I are, uh, we are the co-founders of Highview. We are a talent search firm focused exclusively on Canadian real estate. We are a lean but mighty team of five. We're incredibly passionate about what we do. Uh, we hire junior roles right the way through to executive level positions in the areas of operations, strategy and corporate roles. So if you haven't worked with us before, um, and you ever find yourself thinking about making a career move, or if you are looking to hire in your team, or if you just want to reach out and get some general advice, James and I will be more than happy to speak with you. And um, if we can help in any way, that is very, very important to us. So thank you very much, Farah. Thank you to T Crew for the opportunity to present the webinar. As you said, one of our values is being a force for good, and we really feel it's very important to give back to our community. So if we can help you in any way, uh, further your careers and, and help you be as successful as you can be, then that makes James and I very, very happy. So, <coughs> excuse me, before I hand over to James, I am gonna just do a little bit of a quick recap on the journey so far. So in part one, we took a closer look at your career path by discussing the motivations that drive your performance at work. We talked about the challenges that hiring managers face when looking um, to hire within their team and what you need to consider to help you stand out from the crowd. We also looked at the steps that you can take to create a concise, consistent and compelling message. And we call this your career value proposition. And that proposition does play a very significant role in the hiring manager's decision on whether or not to hire you or whether to promote you from within. And James is actually going to touch a little bit more um, again on that briefly in today's session. We also introduced some practical exercises, um, some references to thought leaders, um, some strategic questions to help you better evaluate your motivations and to help you create that value proposition. Um, if you miss part one, not a problem whatsoever, you can visit the Toronto Crew website. And if you go to news and you go to the recap video, um, you'll be able to watch it from there. But today's session has been designed so that if you did miss um, one, today will still be very, very valuable. And it is a stand alone webinar just unto itself. So we're going to begin um, with looking today at, at what your brand is and how you can go about building your brand. We are going to pause for a Q&A. So please do think of some questions as we're going along and then you can use the chat function throughout the presentation and we'll pause and, and answer any of your questions at that point. Uh, we're then going to be taking um, you through how to leverage your brand. Um, and we're really going to focus in today on your digital for footprint and we're really going to be shining a light on LinkedIn. So without further ado, I am going to hand over to my wonderful business partner, James. Thank you, James. Thank you, Nick. Thanks very much. Hello to everyone who's in attendance today. I think we are over the share screening malfunctions now. So there was a few things moving around there um, in the background, but thank you so much for joining us today. So let's start by defining what we mean by brand. And there are different variations and interpretations of brand. We're going to highlight two for you that we consider fit, uh, fit into the relevance of today's conversation. Now, the first is more business focused, where a brand is the set of expectations, memories, stories, and relationships that taken together account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. So what Seth is alluding to in this statement is that a brand is the sum of all the experiences and in turn, this will influence the decision-making process. Now that could be a hiring manager who's looking to hire you versus another person for the job. Now the second is more people related. Your brand is perception or emotion that's maintained by somebody other than you that describes the total experience of having a relationship with you. Similar to what Seth described as a definition of a business brand, David and Kyle are going a little bit of a step further and they're talking about how does perception and emotion, um, how is it maintained over time? And what are the driving forces behind the total experience of having a relationship with you? 
So hopefully that brings some clarity, helps you to start to think about what your brand may mean to others. And that leads us into today's goal, to learn how to effectively build and leverage your career brand to create a lasting impact on your target audience. And in the words of uh, Will Rogers, who was an actor from the uh, early, earlier part of the 20th century, you never get a chance to make a first impression. So something to keep in mind. So now we have the clarity around our goals and definition, let's begin to dive into these building blocks. So there's lots of models, theories, studies around building a business brand. And most marketing courses and programs today will do a deep dive um, into the subject matter. When it comes to your personal career brand, there is a lot of opinion circulating and the messaging can be confusing, it can be contradictory, it can be compelling, but you're left wondering, how many steps do I need to take to get there? Is it three, is it five, eight, 10? And um, I think this di these diagrams and, and visuals here sort of paint that picture. Building a personal brand is not so well unified and theorized as to what constitutes to the building blocks of a business brand. However, we could argue that the principles behind a business brand do in some ways cross over and translate to your personal brand. So we'll touch upon some of the principles and the steps and what they look like and how they may apply to you. Now, when it comes to you, we're not building a brand from the ground up like we might be if we're building a new business. You've been around for a certain length of time. There will already be perceptions and emotions that are associated with the experience of interacting with you, whether that is in person or whether that is online. So today we're going to focus more of our efforts towards that digital experience that Nicola mentioned that others have of you in light of the digital footprints that you leave behind. So we're going to use Nicola's digital footprint as an example, but there are questions that I want you to think about for yourself in terms of your own digital brand as we go through this process. Now, we're going to bring you back to that definition again, perception and emotion that is maintained by somebody to create that total experience of having a relationship. So just think of that as we're going through some of the imagery and where Nicola sits online. So there is Nicola with the lovely twins. There is Tess the dog. There is some of the charities that Nicola supports online. And this is Nicola's presence on Facebook. There is also Nicola on LinkedIn, uh, what she has to say about herself, what people have endorsed her for, the activities that she participates in and what she's posting and what she's saying on. In terms of high view partners and how this fits into her overall brand as well. So some of the questions here is, what does digital brand say about you? What does it not say about you? Who is it speaking to? Who is it not speaking to? Who is the target audience? Is there a specific focus or an intention that is driving your communication online? Does the digital version of you reflect the in-person version of you? How does your personality come through? Is the content you're sharing engaging? And what is the purpose? What is the end goal of what it is that you are, um, you are promoting online? Now, dependent upon the way you are communicating with your audience, it's going to influence their responses to these questions. The emotions and perceptions people have around who you are, um, how you think, and how you perform inside of your work. It can range from positive to constructive, and perhaps in some instances negative. And rightly or wrongly, people who have interacted with your brand already have a listening of you and a perception and an emotion which will vary from person to person. So spoiler alert, in our opinion, Nicola and I, you will not satisfy everyone's appetite. However, your primary focus here is to ensure the message is well received by those who matter at each stage of your career, which is the perfect segue into the next slide. So we have compartmentalized this and brought it down into five steps. Um, there's two layers to this. So layer number one is discovery. Layer number two is going to look a little bit closer at the platforms that you can, uh, you can use. So let me just put the five up on the slide there. And we're going to start on the audience. What we can learn from building a business brand as building a personal brand 
is the power of research and knowing your audience. If you miss this critical step and you go straight to the creation design of the product or service, or in our case, uh, your message, you may be branding or marketing yourself in a way which fails to connect with your target audience. And in this situation, at best, they will say nothing. <laughs> and at worst case scenario, they will let others know. So um, in terms of, we'll just focus on the first box on the left first of all there. Some people feel that real estate is a really small industry. Others say it's not so small. We'll let you decide from a digital perspective. But there are over 1,000 registered real estate companies on LinkedIn across the GTA. And this information is coming directly from our, uh, our account manager at LinkedIn. Uh, there are over 100,000 LinkedIn profiles within the real estate uh, industry across that same geography. And we're also not including the people who perhaps have coded um, themselves differently. So they're working within real estate, but perhaps they're in an, a HR function or a legal function or business unit. And so as an industry, they've put legal or HR. So the number could certainly be um, a lot more. Now, um, these numbers, your audience number, will begin to decrease once you factor in the area of expertise, your asset classes, and the types of companies that you want to be associated or working for. But it's safe to say there is a very big playing field with a significant volume of people who could be simply unaware of your presence in the market. So our audience there could be the industry, the employers that you've worked with or you hope to work with, and the employees that you've worked with in the past or you'll be joining when you join a new company. The customers, the tenants, the contractors, the service providers and suppliers, or it could just simply be your direct competitors. So if you're gonna be applying for a job online, there will be other applicants and there will be other people with their brand out there in the market as well. So once we're clearer on the audience, we can begin to take a closer look at the focus. And this is the focus of the brand. What is the brand vision? What is the ultimate end game of your brand? What is the mission of your brand? What steps and objectives will your brand take to reach its mission? What are the values that underpin? What are the guiding principles of your brand? And what is the purpose? What are you looking to achieve? Again, these are questions that you can be discovering. Bringing us back to part one, um, last month we looked at value proposition and I'm not gonna dive too deeply into this today. You can uh, watch the video on uh, the Toronto Crew website under news recap video part one. Uh, but in this section, for those that did not attend part one, we discussed the buying motivators of an employer and how we can position our qualifications, be that our experience, our skills, our education, as well as our added value attributes, our areas of expertise, technical skills, soft skills, and how they feed, the qualifications and our value feed up into the buying motiv motivators. When you're dealing with brand, we need, you need to be having this conversation. There's also uh, the personality. So um, as the value proposition leans on both what you're doing and who you're being, the personality is really diving into how do you show up. Now, there is a website um, that I would recommend and I would endorse. It's called 16personalities.com. Some of you may have um, used this before. It, it's a free test. It is a fairly robust test and it gives you some fantastic information. You get a full report back in terms of how your personality is showing up in different situations, um, perhaps in work or, or inside of relationships. Now, Though taking those four steps there, we can really begin to build and accelerate and elevate your message. And we talked about in part one, creating a concise, compelling, consistent message. And what I will add to the three C's is authenticity and being inspiring. And there's that fine line. So being authentic, absolutely, but also remembering that you are in a professional networking environment. But what you're saying, how is it reaching people? Is it moving them and leaving them feel inspired by what it is that you have to say? So there's lots here that you can begin to discover when you are looking to build your brand. Now, the next step in the process is once you have discovered, you can look at the different platforms. And we show up in many different spaces and places throughout our career. So it's worth spending just a few minutes to recognize how far and wide does our brand reach people in the world of work? We've highlighted five. 
perhaps I should say four because I don't know if others uh, sort of technically qualifies as a platform, but we simply just couldn't find an all encompassing title for that. But starting inside of work, now you'll notice at the top of, um, of each row there, I've put whether either it's a present, past, present, future impact. So inside of work, it's very much present. It's where you are, um, it's where you are today. And this will depend on the size of your business. You could be interacting directly or indirectly with a handful of people, hundreds to thousands of people week in, week out. There is also um, the wider industry, and this could be people that you've worked with in the past, potentially people that you will be working with in the future. They or may already have a perception or emotion of what it is like to work with you. In terms of the associations that you're a part of, they may be a smaller or larger audience than your place of work. Um, but it also extend, extends to the interactions that you're having with perhaps committee members, uh, guest members, speakers, anybody that is interacting with that association. Now, in terms of others, we, we put in here charities, community groups, social. Perhaps you're taking a current course or a program or a designation or a certification and you're inside of a classroom and you're inside of a group. It could be mentors that are outside of the industry that you um, are leaning upon at this time. Now, it's safe to say there is a lot of moving pieces and we would need a five part webinar just to discuss work industry association and all the other areas. But for the focus of today, I really want to look at the digital footprint. That's our focus. And online, this can be broken down into four channels um, and three viewports. So social media, it doesn't need a big introduction. It just allows us to quickly create um, and share content with, with the public. So whether that's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Snapchat, you name it, it is, um, it's offering you that opportunity. The, the web media, this describes the channels that you're in control of. So it controls, um, it may be the control of your website, a blog, an ebook, a white paper, a presentation. You are able to add this, edit this, tweak this, delete the content, you probably own it. In terms of the news, it's the content that third parties create that's relating or relatable to your brand. It's the coverage you receive on sites other than your own. A um, this is a live example, it could be running a webinar which is hosted by T Crew and then is featured on their website under their news. Perhaps you or your team have worked on implementing a um, strategic initiative and uh, during COVID and you've received acknowledgement or accolade which has been featured in the Globe and Mail or perhaps an industry magazine. SEO stands for search engine optimization. This is the process of getting traffic from the free and organic nature of search results on search engines. So all major search engines such as Google um, have primary search results where web pages and other content such as blogs, articles, uh, images, videos, and they're all shown and ranked based on what the search engine considers to be most relevant to the user. So SEO also plays a pivotal role in optimizing your LinkedIn profile by using keywords. Now, these are the words or phrases that are typically searched for online. They're what your audience members will type into Google and other search engines in the hope of finding um, helpful results. So to, so to determine which keywords should be featured on your LinkedIn page, um, think back to the previous slide when we talked about your audience. We talked about the focus. We talked about the value proposition. We talked about your personality. And how does that fit into the industry? How does that fit into the specialties and um, the words that you could use that could be predominant within your profile to really highlight that? LinkedIn profiles are crawled by search engines uh, every second of the day. So if you aren't making your target keywords prominent, you may be missing an opportunity to connect with more people. There is also different viewports to consider. How your message will appear on a desktop will vary from how it will appear on a mobile uh, device or a tablet because you're using less room to explain what it is that you're looking to explain. So typically there'll be less characters available. So when I open the screen on my mobile and I'm looking at a post on LinkedIn, it will look very different from how the post would look if I was sending it from my desktop at home. So we have to consider those as well. I'm not going to spend too much time, like SEO is a, is a huge area um, in itself. Um, and I will highlight later in the next steps in terms of where you can go to find out more information 
um, about that and the other areas um, that we're going to discuss today. But for now, I will, I'll hand back to Nicola. So we'll break for a Q&A if there's any questions that have come up um, during the first part of the uh, webinar. Um, then this is the opportunity. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, James. That was great. Um, any questions coming in? So, so, so there's a few already that, that came in sort of a, a little while ago. So one of them was um, what, what went through my mind as I was building out my brand. Um, and it's really got me thinking. I've sort of taken some notes here. Maybe, James, we can just pop back to the slide because I'm thinking now, <laughs> what was going through my mind when I was... Uh, when, when, when I was, you know, sort of put, putting my, my presence online. <laughs> but I think, um, I think for me, especially, it, it, it was, I want to be authentic to my values. Uh, maybe we can just go back onto the, to just, just one page actually, James. Yeah, here we go. So I wanted, I wanted to be very authentic to my values and I wanted my values to be very obvious to people. So the first thing that I did was really think about, you know, who am I as a person? So I'm a mum, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm an animal lover, I'm a charity supporter, I'm a business owner, I'm a boss, and I'm a confidant to, you know, job seekers, my clients and so forth. So when I was putting things online, I'm, I'm always thinking about how am I, you know, portraying myself? Um, and then the second thing is, what do I stand for? And thinking about sort of the sort of going back a step, thinking about characteristics, I like to be known for being fun and for being social and for being caring and, and being big hearted. I want to know, I want people to know that I'm professional and that I have um, opinions and that I'm not scared to share those opinions. I want to be an authority in the marketplace. And I want people to think that I'm relatable and that they can call me up and that I'm approachable. And all of this really leads to my value proposition and my personal and professional values are very, very intertwined. And if you have a look on our, um, on our company website, our four main values are enjoying the journey, doing what's right, being the best and being a force for good. And I just greatly believe that if people are looking me up online, whether it be LinkedIn, whether it's on our um, you know, Facebook, I, I don't have a Twitter or Instagram account. I'm going to be completely honest with you all. I'm, I, I feel like I've sort of missed the boat on that. Be a little bit too old for that. Um, but, you know, I, I want to create emotions in people and I want people to feel that they know me and that they can reach out to me because ours is very much a service industry, a very um, service driven profession. And it's amazing the number of people that say to me, um, I haven't ever spoken to them before and they'll say, oh, I noticed that you have a miniature schnauzer and oh, my sister has twins. Or, you know, even the photographs that we took for our website were taken at the distillery district and that sort of gets a conversation going. So I think what I'm trying to say here is never underestimate the power of photographs as well, because people will look at your photographs often before they actually read the content as well. Mm -hmm. That was a great point. And also it's, it's not just the knowing, it's the trusting in that you are credible. And um, that's something that is so important and to consider, um, as you said, both in the, in the visuals, but also the, the content. And we're going to come to that a little bit later on. Were there any other questions to focus on at this time or <laughs> shall we? Just, just one question that came through is how long, how long should I take to build my brand mm. you answer that that one james oh, that's a great question putting me on the hot seat um there is no rule i mean let's go back to discovery it's um there is no rule to this when we were um when we were building out high view partners we spent the best part of three months um doing a real deep dive discovery of what our value proposition was we hired a professional web marketing uh, team to help us at that point but a lot of the lifting the gathering of information and creating the focus and understanding the audience the marketing and development company could not provide that to us um, 
but we, I would say for that business, it was, it was, it took us a number of months. Um, I mean, how long is a piece of string? I, I would say that certainly give this time um, to really go through these steps and understand um, what each, how each part how each part fits together. So I'm sorry if that doesn't really answer the question. It's a little difficult to, to answer. Um, but I, I would certainly say that, you know, this isn't, a, this isn't a one hour sit down and pull out a piece of paper and start doing a, a mapping exercise. And it's also an ongoing process. Like brands evolve, they change over time. You know, so you might want to come back to this. Nicola and I have done this recently. So we're sitting inside of COVID and we have a little more time than we normally do in terms of the volume of searches that we're working on. And so we launched the People Who Perform podcast series. We decided that was a give back that we wanted to do for a long time. Um, so we, we created that and that was inside of the discovery around our brand in terms of wanting to inspire other people to step up into uh, real estate and also elevate their game. And since, you know, since that's been launched, we've had over 15 business leaders um, talking about their career journey. So um, it's, it's an ongoing process is, would be my, um, my answer to that. Mm -hmm. So bringing us back to, uh, so let, let's move on to part two now. We're really going to do a deep dive into, um, and thanks for that, Nicola. We're going to do a deep dive into LinkedIn. I would like to thank uh, Vaughn Saunders at LinkedIn, who helped to provide some of the content that follows. This also is built upon Nicola and I having over a decade of using LinkedIn every day. Um, I found out that the average person uses LinkedIn about 20 minutes a week, average. Um, that is certainly not the case for Nicola and I. Um, there, there is, um, there's so much to go through here. So the way this is structured is um, I'm going to look at this from a strategic perspective and sort of break apart the different segments. And then luckily for you, this is very, very well documented. And LinkedIn launched a whole area to its website called LinkedIn Learning which if you go to your home landing page, not your profile page, but inside of LinkedIn, when you log on, that's your home page, then you can go to your profile. And down on the right hand side, you can actually click LinkedIn learning. There is over 600 videos just dedicated to learning LinkedIn. And you can learn anything. There are people on there talking about marketing or business or finance, the list goes on. Um, and in their own words, LinkedIn learning is a place where you can rock your profile, find your next job, generate leads, start social selling, and connect with important influencers um, online. And there's the link there, and it will come up again a little bit later on. So let's take a look at some of the statistics that were sourced from LinkedIn, provided by LinkedIn during 2020, just to give you a bit of a flavor in terms of what are we dealing with here? Well, firstly, Microsoft purchased LinkedIn back in 2016 um, for uh, Quite, quite the sum of money. Um, it's grown to now 675 million users, 315 which are um, active on a monthly basis. One in three professionals on the planet are using LinkedIn. The, um, just gonna have to minimize my camera there. Um, the average number of connections on LinkedIn is close to a thousand. LinkedIn also um, shared with me that of the women that are leaders in the business, meaning leaders at um, LinkedIn, it's, it's over 40%. So they really made a push around this, which is um, far significant to many other companies um, that are out there, but over 40% of women hold senior and leadership positions in the business. Only 30% 30 of millennials use LinkedIn, 80% of users um, think that this networking is vital to their success. 50% of users aged between 35 to 45 use LinkedIn. 59% uh, of LinkedIn users don't have Twitter, my, uh, myself and Nicola included. 41% visit LinkedIn via their mobile. There is over 50,000 standard skills, 100,000 articles published every week, and nearly 40% of LinkedIn users pay for those premium account privileges, which allows you to uh, send out emails and connect with people in other ways. So what I'd like to do is, um, at this point, I'd like to mention that LinkedIn, your presence on LinkedIn, it 100% matters for a host of reasons, particularly when it comes to hiring. So when we send out a resume to a client at Highview, um, we often put the link 
to the candidate's LinkedIn profile in there. Clients like to know, clients like to go onto their profile and take a look. And with over 30% of all job opportunities happening directly um, or indirectly via LinkedIn through adverts or people connecting with one another, it is the space and the place to be and why we're making it such a focus of today. So I would like to give you an analogy to think about and imagine this is you. So let's talk about the, uh, like a consumer experience. You're looking to make a purchase online. You identify three companies to explore. Company number one, they have no website. Company number two has a website, but it's tricky to navigate. The messaging is somewhat unclear or irrelevant, and it just looks and feels unwelcoming and unengaging. Company number three, however, not only has a website, but it's visually strong, it's modern, it's easy to access and navigate, it's fully integrated and it's engaging. Now, when it comes to LinkedIn and looking for a job, what company are you? Are you number one, number two, or number three when it comes to your own personal page? And what does that experience leave your audience feeling in terms of, back to the earlier slides, your focus, your value proposition, your personality, but also your ability to use technology? So let's build a customized strategy specifically for LinkedIn. And we're gonna do this in, in five levels. Firstly, purpose. Now, this circles back to the motivations that we discussed in part one. What is driving you to do what you do? What are your passions inside of your craft? What puts the fire in your belly? And why are you using LinkedIn? Like, what is it to fulfill what purpose? Which leads us naturally into our goals. What are we looking to achieve? Um, via LinkedIn, and we're gonna explain that in more detail on one of the next slides. There's your audience. And you probably have a good understanding by now, if you've done the discovery, not now being now, but if you go through the discovery process, you'll be clear on what that audience looks like. But what you may not know is what is important to them. What are they listening to on LinkedIn? What are they following, liking, sharing, commenting? What are they engaging with? You need to think about your tone of voice in a LinkedIn strategy. And this links back to the messaging that we discussed earlier in building your brand. Is it clear? Is it consistent? Is it compelling? What impact is your voice having on your followers? And how does it leave people feeling? Is it authentic and inspiring? Educational? Is it informative? Are you looking to be relatable, positive? And like Nicola mentioned, having fun and being humorous. And finally, there is the big ingredient of all, content. What are you saying and what does this say about you? So in terms of your profile, using Nicholas as an example, there's different means and purposes of, in terms of why we set up a profile. It is a gateway to new connections and new opportunities. So are you looking for new job opportunities, looking to expand your network or aspects of your knowledge? Maybe you're looking to find new customers or contractors or suppliers or tenants. Perhaps it's about building your credibility and building trust with your community and just raising your awareness or perhaps raising awareness over your company or something that is of particular interest to you. Now, in terms of the audience that you are looking to address, who is your audience? Is it employers that you're following or people that you're reaching out to directly within the real estate space? Is it perhaps recruiters like myself and the team at Highview Partners to help you um, pivot and make that best next move in your career? Is it the networks or connect, sorry, the network connections or associations that you're involved with? And perhaps that it's just more generic thought leaders um, that are out there in the world talking about um, matters of interest to you. So it, it's once you've established that audience, um, how are you connecting with them? Now, it might be a little bit difficult to send Bill Gates a, a connection <laughs> request, um, but our advice would be, if you are looking to people as employers or recruiters or in your network, try wherever possible to make that personal connection. You have an opportunity to send them a message rather than just pressing connect. You have 300 characters to work with, and so have a think about what would be a concise, consistent, and compelling message to begin to start to move forward a conversation. And my advice here would be in your sharing, in your connecting, would be to be more concerned about being interested than being interesting. 
So what is it perhaps that you'd like to learn or comment on something that they're doing or they're involved with and add to that conversation rather than it being uh, simply a sales pitch. So that moves us on to your voice and there's two steps firstly that we need to cover off and that's gathering information back to the building blocks and discovery. That is where you can start to gather intel and craft the narrative. Now I'd like to take this opportunity um, to highlight Carrie Ashfield because Carrie has been a driving force behind Highview Partners LinkedIn presence. Um, Nicola and I, I guess you could say, are more the gatherers and uh, Carrie is the creator, the narrator of a lot of what we are sharing um, on, our, uh, on our company website as well as our profile. So I think Nicola and Carrie are great examples. If you're to visit their profiles on LinkedIn, um, it will show you how to optimize your voice um, and it showcases their uh, profiles in terms of their experience, what others have to say and think about them, who's endorsing them, their education, and it builds a complete profile. And once that happens, LinkedIn announced that you are, uh, not publicly, but to you, that you have an all-star uh, status profile for, um, for bragging rights. Now let's move on to that big ingredient, and that is uh, content. So in terms of content, when LinkedIn served it, surveyed its users to find out what content they found most engaging, the feedback was, if the content was educational, that was number one. A close second is that it's relevant to the person um, that is listening. Thirdly, they're sharing a latest trend. There's something that um, there's something that they're sharing that is of interest that's going on that is related to the industry as a whole. It's inspiring. It leaves them feeling perhaps empowered or moved by what it is that they have to share and wanting to take action. And it helps with skill development. So in terms of your online presence, which really that is what content is. Content is online presence. There are three activities that are most relevant uh, to LinkedIn, and that is posting, uh, tailored messages, um, putting out visuals in terms of images and, and videos, uh, speaking in terms of thought leadership and articles. And we've noticed in recent times that LinkedIn posts have become more casual, less formal. Uh, some like it, some complain about it, some don't really know what to make of it. But ultimately, we encourage you on LinkedIn to be your authentic self and at the same time, be mindful it is a professional networking platform. It's about building connections, expanding your network, and um, there is absolutely no harm in having fun and enjoying the journey, but just being mindful that, of the setting that you are in. Again, just to be conscious of your audience and what, what you are saying, what does that matter or how does that land with them? In terms of thought leadership, so we have introduced our podcast series and here is Karen uh, and Farah featured more recently by Nicola and I. So this is an area that where we've been taking on thought leadership in terms of that educational and informative piece that we feel is relevant to people that gives them uh, trends, current trends, and also leaves them feeling inspired in some way. With content, there is also tips and advice. So the frequency at which you are posting will definitely impact on how visual you are online and how you appear on people's feeds. So how often are you sharing information and what are you sharing about? Is it catchy? Is it engaging? Is it making people to stop and think? Are you asking questions? Um, if it's, it's very small there, but it says where my post is for Karen, I actually took a quote from the podcast. Can't we make this, uh, can't we make this just a little bit better? Karen's words, but it just sort of creates that question in your mind of, huh, what are we talking about here? Are you responsive to people that are commenting, that are sharing your posts? Are you commenting on their comments? Are you reciprocal? Um, is it all about people commenting and liking what you do, but you're not doing that in return? Is it mobile friendly? Can people pick it up and see all the characters on the screen at once? There is also hashtags and at tags that allows you to link people in as Nicola and I have done here, as you can see with Karen and Farah, um, and also allows you to put in hashtags. There is also rankings and ratings on what are the most searchable hashtags. People have to go and search for them. And sometimes they do, they just would type in hashtag real estate, hashtag careers, and then, and then it will appear. Now, LinkedIn have also provided some tips um, 
and there's some things that you might want to consider and there's actually some um, some results here outcomes so people that had a profile photo received 21 times more profile views and up to 36 times more messages wow that's huge if you have a professional headshot uh, that can increase your uh, your viewers by 14 times LinkedIn images have 98% higher comment rate. So if you're doing a post and you add a LinkedIn image, you add an image, not necessarily a LinkedIn image, but an image in LinkedIn to your post, then that doubles your engagement. There's uh, good times to post and not post. So between Tuesday at 8 a.m. and Thursday at 4 p.m. is considered the window of time. Some people um, argue that the commuting hours of eight till nine or five till six um, also work very well as well in terms of getting impressions and clicks and views and comments. Listing five or more skills on your LinkedIn profile can lead up to 17 times more viewership. A person following your company on LinkedIn, this is interesting, is, is over 80% more likely to open an email that you send. So this is where um, you have the premium account options and you can actually send them a direct email and you get more characters to write your message. You get 200 characters for the subject line, you get 2000 characters for the body. I would certainly not encourage or suggest anyone to, to write a book on your first uh, encounter or introduction with somebody, but there is that option there for you. And interestingly, employees sourced through LinkedIn are 40% less likely to leave the company within the first six months. So perhaps there is something that's just happening on LinkedIn in terms of the visibility, the credibility, getting to know someone, like someone and trust someone online that is leading us to making better informed decisions. So in terms of next steps, I'm just gonna take a very brief moment, uh, a minute to skim over this um, and then we'll get into the Q&A. So in terms of next steps, absolutely, I would, I would signpost anybody to go check out LinkedIn Learning. And these are just a few of the ones that I captured for um, learning LinkedIn. So there's personal branding on social media, how to use LinkedIn, writing, uh, writing to be heard, marketing on LinkedIn, social media marketing, uh, your personal and uh, brand pages, how to use videos, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. So there is the link. And I would um, absolutely encourage anyone to reach out and have a look at that. I would also like to just signpost very briefly back to our part one, the first session that we did. If you recall the model that we discussed, for those that, that did not attend, um, you can watch the recap video on Toronto Cruise website. You can go to 34 minutes and 30 seconds for this uh, exercise. And you can also reach out to Sharon uh, and the team to get the download and the handout from uh, part one. But given how much of a focus of today has been on generating emotion and perception uh, through your digital footprint, I think it's very timely to go back and look at the Jahari window. And very briefly, you have the quadrant on the left there that shows what people know and what you know of yourself. And you have the different adjectives, both positive and constructive. And you can stress test these both on yourself, but also encourage, ask other people to get involved, to tell you exactly what it is they think about um, you and your personality. And that will sort of give you a bit of a framework to help um, with the building blocks of your brand. And that's me. So I'll, uh, I'll hand back to Nicola now for uh, the Q&A. That was really great, James. Really insightful, very interesting. I actually learned a few things along the way as well. So thank you very much. Um, so hopefully that's helped you all. Um, we've obviously looked at the building blocks and the tools to help you leverage your personal brand online and in particular on LinkedIn. If you have any more questions, you can always reach out to James and I um, afterwards. But um, let's jump into the Q&A here. J just got a couple of questions. Please don't be shy. We've, we've got 10 minutes. So if you're thinking anything at all, please, please do um, throw the questions over. Um, somebody's asked what mistakes we have seen. Um, if you don't mind, James, I'll, I'll sort of go ahead and answer that one. So I was just jotting down some notes. So I think the, the, the biggest mistakes that we see from our perspective in our line of work is that there is, there is not, there is no consistency between the online branding. So somebody, for example, may have a very, very professional, um, LinkedIn profile, 
and unfortunately the po you know the, the the pictures and the content that they project on social media like facebook instagram twitter is just not aligned and it's really really important that if you're creating a consistent message then obviously everything needs to be aligned so um could i jump in on that for a second yeah, just to add yeah, to that yeah. clients um will uh, clients are very inquisitive clients being our hiring managers that we work with they're very inquisitive and they go beyond linkedin and they will look at twitter instagram reddit um facebook even google to have a look at you know who you are in a more holistic view and whether that aligns with their uh, their values and the culture of their business it's something to be mindful of Absolutely. Because what, what, what behaviours you exemplify online, you know, that they can be then expected in the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, some of the mistakes that we see on, on LinkedIn, and they're just usually very simple ones, spelling, grammar, blurry pictures, inappropriate pictures. Um, we saw one actually a little while ago, didn't we, James, where someone was sitting there um, wearing like a string vest smoking a cigarette, which was probably the worst one that I've ever seen. Um, yeah, it certainly ranked up there. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it, it's just take, take the time, take, you know, put care and attention into what you're producing on LinkedIn. Um, in a job description, you have soft skills like, you know, professionalism, being conscientious, having good judgment. And again, it goes back to what is the content? What are the photos? What are you putting out there? Because if you are not aligning it to the things that employers are looking for, again, there is disparity and it's going to, um, that pe people are going to question your judgment. Yeah, um, I would just jump in on that as well. Again, back to the earlier uh, slides where we talked about you you are not going to satisfy everyone's appetite. It is yeah. an impossible task. So just think clearly about, you know, the primary focus of your messaging is to reach uh, the right audience and how that's going to then elevate and um, your career moving forward. Um, so yes, trying to be, you know, a hundred different things to a hundred different people is not the best approach. And I, I think we've captured that in the, in the building blocks. Yeah. Some, somebody else has actually asked about the impact of making mistakes and, you know, we, we have seen, we, we've sent resumes before to clients. And then the client has looked on LinkedIn and maybe the dates have been slightly different. Um, so they've decided not to pursue uh, with, a, with an interview. Uh, we've seen offers retracted. Um, I mean, can you get fired for posting, you know, certain content? A absolutely, yes, you can. Um, I think as well, we've seen, you know, during COVID and the sort of re racial injustice protests, mm. it's just very, very important to be mm -hmm. mindful um, of every single thing that you're putting out and about online. Yeah, I would add to that the question that somebody posed earlier about how long to build your brand. Um, take the time to to stop and think before you post out. We saw what happened recently with the um, with the CEO of CrossFit who made a comment online, and it was I think it was Twitter, um, and uh, and he he'd made a mention about something, and suddenly the entire contract with Reebok was retracted, and it's it's done, and that's impacted that entire business. And I believe he's since left um, the company. So. Not implying or suggesting that anyone in this group would be doing that, but just to just pause, take a step back and, and have a think about exactly what it is. And if you have a, if you have counsel, you have like a group around you that could have a look at your posts before they go out. We often do that um, in our company and working with Carrie as well. And if you are really challenged or strained in terms of how to uh, ignite your LinkedIn profile and make sure that it's search engine optimized, that the narrative is correct, I would strongly, strongly encourage and recommend you to reach out to Carrie Ashfield and have that conversation. Um, I'm sure you would agree, Nicola. She's done wonderful work yeah, with us at Highview. And she is a T crew member. Okay, well, thank you so much. I think we're going to wrap up there, everybody. But thank you so much for joining us. And if, there, if you have any other questions, please do feel free to contact James and I after the session. And thank you again, Farah. I just wanted to jump in and just share a thank you to you guys. This was such a great um, session. I learned a lot. I did not know all the inner workings of LinkedIn. And I think there's a lot more to learn there, too. 
So thanks for providing those resources. I, I feel very proud that this is an offering that um, we're able to give to our members uh, and that you guys were able to lead in, in this conversation today because um, I think they're, especially in the virtual world that we're all now working in, our presence, our brand, what we do online and how we um, share online and how we represent ourselves is important now more than ever. Um, so what a great session. Um, I also wanted to share with the members that are still with us right now that we will be showcasing and sharing a link to High Views podcast, the real estate podcast about people who perform. We've, uh, they've now featured a few of our uh, Toronto crew members, which is great, and they're open to featuring more. And so um, hopefully you guys will be able to engage with that in, in the coming weeks as well. So thank you again, James and Nicola. Um, so appreciative of the time you've taken today to spend with our members and provide this, what I would say, invaluable content. You're very welcome. Thanks, Mara. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.